Hello everyone, welcome to our today's budget class. And specifically today, I would want us to look at this important section of a budget called flexible budget. My name is Dr. Joshua Aura. I teach management accounting at RCM online Zoom college. So to help me demonstrate this concept of flexible budgets to you very well, I happen to be having a question that you've been able to pin on your screen. So the question, the question reads, ladies and gentlemen, going to the question straight away, we are able to see the question. We are told a company a company has prepared the following fixed budget for the coming year. So we have sales, we have production, we have direct materials, direct labor, variable overhead, fixed overhead. And I can see the total cost there is 97,500. So the budgeted selling price is dollars 10 per unit. So even without knowing really further what this examiner wants, I should be able to calculate the budget profit, the budget profit. So what I need to do is to come and mention here the original budget, the original budget, income statement, income statement, the original budget, income statement, where the very first thing which I'll have to recognize is called the sales revenue. So sales revenue, ladies and gentlemen, from the information that you have just read, after that particular first table, after the first table, if you're able to see your question there, after the first table, I can see the budgeted selling price of 10. How do we normally get revenue if you're selling pens of this nature for you to get revenue? Say in a day you sold 25 pens, 25 pens, and the selling price is 10 shillings. So for you to get money generated, which is called revenue, you will take 25 times 10, which is 250. So in short, for us to get the revenue, we should be taking here price times quantity, quantity sold. Ladies and gentlemen, for us here, we can see our price, our budgeted selling price is 10, and our sales units are 10,000. So 10 times 10,000, this will give us what sales revenue? Will give us a sales revenue of 100,000. Sales revenue of 100,000 being budgeted. And then we can see the budgetary expenses the budget expenses, we have direct materials. Direct materials, ladies and gentlemen, what we have there, we have 50,000. We're simply copying down that table. We have direct labor. Direct labor, ladies and gentlemen, we have 25,000. We have uh, variable overhead. Variable overheads, we have uh, 12,500. We have fixed overhead. Fixed over, ladies and gentlemen, we have 10,000. And if you are to add, as per the question, you'll be able to see a total expenditure of 97,500. If you take away this total cost, if you take away the total cost from the sales revenue, you'll be able to give us, ladies and gentlemen, our profit. Our profit, our profit will be equal to what happened to be having very great students with me here. But of course, you're keeping the 2,000. 500 because we are keeping uh, social uh, distance there, uh, COVID regulations, etc. So we have a profit of 2,500. We deduct the cost from the revenue. There we are. What does this examiner want us to do? This examiner wants us to prepare a flexed budget. So come and create a flexed budget here. A flexed budget. A flexed budget. A flexed budget is a budget which has been created that to reflect the actual number of units. So we are going to redraft this original budget, but this time round, asking ourselves, what if the quantity was equal to the actual production? So then we have to look for the actual production. Please look at that question again. Look at the question again. They are telling us at the end of the year, the following cost had been incurred for the actual production of 12,000 units. We have direct material. So the most important thing is that uh, we have an actual production of 12,000 units. 
And then if you read this particular statement, just before prepare, before the required, you also see the actual sales was what here, uh, 12,000 units. The actual sales unit was 12,000 units. So, ladies and gentlemen, here it's all about asking ourselves a simple what if analysis. We're saying revenue wise, revenue wise, with 10,000 units, with 10,000 units in this case, that we buy the bed, we expected to get 100,000 units. 100,000 in this case, here, money, dollars, revenue. What about the actual production? Actual production, actual sales in terms of sales revenue, actual sales, we sold 12,000 units. So what about 12,000 units? What about 12,000 units? That should translate to how much? That should translate to how much? Somebody, if you take 12,000 times 100,000 divided by 10,000, if you take, ladies and gentlemen, 12,000 times 100,000 divided by 10,000, you'll end up getting 100 and what year? 20,000, thank you and thank you very much. Now there is something I would want to derive at ladies and gentlemen here. Listen to me, listen to me. Look at materials, direct materials. Direct materials, I would want to readjust this, having in mind that of the actual output, actual output, actual output. So we shall be asking ourselves this simple question, this simple question. If in this case here, my budgeted output of 10,000, remember the budget output was 10,000, is able to give me a, a budget of dollars 50,000 in terms of materials. What if I had an insight? What if in this case here, I knew in advance that I was to produce exactly 12,000 units? Then how much direct materials would have I charged? By doing those changes, you are flexing your budget. You are making changes to your budget. So somebody will cross multiply 12 times 50,000 divided by 10,000, what will you end up getting? 60,000. 60, now, ladies and gentlemen, listen and listen to me very well. Listen and listen to me very well. Somebody who has understood this concept of flexible, flexed budget, will not do it the way I'm doing. That person, what that person will do, this person will come and calculate what we call a flexing ratio. Will come and calculate what we call a flexing ratio. How do we get our flexing ratio? To get our flexing ratio, we normally take actual output, actual output of a budgeted output. What have I said about flexing ratio? Because I'll not be doing this, what if, what if this, no, no, no. I just need to get what we call a flexing ratio. So flexing ratio should be equal to actual output divided by budgeted output. So our actual output, my friends, to be told in the question is 12,000 divided by the budgeted output, which was 10,000. So could you kindly give me the flexing ratio? 1.2, thank you and thank you very much. Now having computed this flexing ratio, my work will be very easy. My work will be to search for those figures that normally adjust as my quantities adjust. Like what do you know about sales revenue? Of course, sales revenue as quantities as we sell more, we expect to realize more sales revenue. So all these quantities that normally, all these parameters that change as our quantities change must be multiplied with the flexing ratio. So like now sales revenue, this one is automatic multiplied. It has a relationship with the number of units. So if you try doing 100,000 times 1.2, you'll end up getting that 120,000. How about direct material? Even from this word, direct. Direct means what a direct association with the number of units produced. So direct, all direct items, you must always multiply them, ladies and gentlemen, with a flexing ratio. So times 1.2, and we'll be able to bear witness with us that we'll get exactly the same answer we had obtained. Go to the third one. The third one, again, is a direct thing. So it has to be multiplied with 1.2. So somebody help me out here. So 25,000 times 1.2, what do we have here, somebody? 30,000. Go to the next one, which is variable over its variable from the name variable. This is something which will be varying. So it has to be flexed. It must be flexed. So times 1.2, so 12,500 times 1.2 gives us what figure somebody? 15,000, I'm being told. How about fixed overheads? 
as the name suggests, these are those items here that cannot flex. They are constant. So fixed, don't apply, don't subject this figure to the flexing ratio. This one, we simply transfer it the way it is to this other side. So could you kindly come here and give me the total cost and the flex budget? And the flex budget, take this plus this plus this plus this. Give me the total cost. 115,000, 115,000. Could you kindly subtract the total cost, the total cost from our revenue? 120,000 minus 115,000 gives me what profit somebody here. I'm being told 5,000. Thank you and thank you very much. 5,000. Now, after I've done the flex budget, I now need to compare the flex budget figures with the, the actual figures, with the actual figures, with the actual figures. So with the actual figures, ladies and gentlemen, the actual P and L, the actual P and L, if you look at uh, that particular question that we have there, they have given us the actual parameters. They are telling us, for instance, under note number, or rather not note number, but uh, this note which comes before prepare, before the required, I can see the actual sales were 12,000 units at dollars 122,000. So come and just pick that figure and put it there. So the actual P and L is 122,000. Ladies and gentlemen, go to the actual direct materials. You can see on that particular table before the requirement, the direct materials here were 60,000. Direct materials were 60,000. Direct labor was 28,500. We have a variable overhead, which is 15,000. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a fixed overhead, which are 11,000. They're simply copying them. We are copying them. And the total cost here, is 114,500. So if I subtract this total cost from the actual revenue, could you kindly help me this to get the actual profit? Take 122,000 minus 114,500. Minus 114,500. What figure are we going to get? 7,500. Thank you very much. That is our profit. Now, ladies and gentlemen, of course, we normally compare the flexed budget with the actual P and L for us to get variances. So for us to get variances, variances, we normally take differences between the flexed budget figures and the actual. So we start with sales. Sales, I can see my budget at 120, but actually we made more. So that will increase my profit. So in this case here, the variance, the difference between the two is 2,000. So 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, what here? Favorable, 2,000 favorable. Favorable means a parameter that will favor us. A parameter which will favor us in terms of profit is that parameter which will increase our profit, which will increase our profit. So go to the second one. The second item is comparison of materials. So 60 versus 60, that's a dash, no variation. How about the third item? 30,000 and 28,500, that gives me 1,500. So I need to ask myself whether this 1,500 is good for the company or bad for the company. You can see expense-wise, expense-wise, you can see we saved because we budgeted to incur more, but we incurred less, so we saved. So it's an, a reduction in expense, is an increase in profits. So even this one has to be demarcated as favorable, like that. So we go to the next one, 15, 15, this gives us a dash. We go to the next one, 10 and 11,000, I can see 1,000. A device, because now here, we have an actual expenditure, which is a higher, an actual expenditure, which is a higher. So we have a 1,000, a device. Now, ladies and gentlemen, remember we normally do variances here to explain our final profits. We can see that finally, vis-a-vis, vis -a -vis, our budget here, which had a profit of 5,000, our actual profit here became more by 2,500. This and this gives us 2,500, which is a favorable variance. Now, could you kindly come and combine all your variances? Combine all your variances. If you take 2,000 plus this, that gives me 3,500. Minus a thousand because this is a diverse, that will give me two thousand five hundred favorable, which ladies and gentlemen agrees with this. And if it agrees with this, we say that uh, everything has been reconciled. That means that uh, your examiner will be ready to give you what we call a golden handshake. You'll be working towards what here yeah, passing. And remember, some of these papers passing in some of these papers is normally not very easy. You really need to have very experienced teachers like ourselves. Look at the team that RCM, look at, uh, for example, our profile. The team that RCM has, 
in terms of lecturers, these are seasoned lecturers. Lecturers who cannot let you down, who can't let you down. So what you need to do immediately, just sign up for our online classes. Our online classes are also very reasonable in terms of prices. We normally charge 3,400. With this 3,400, ladies and gentlemen, we give you three things. Number one, access to all our pre-recorded videos. Access to all our pre-recorded videos covering the entire syllabus. Number two, we give you access to our live Zoom classes, which normally come up once every week. And then, ladies and gentlemen, number three, number three, number three, we give you our prestigious, we give you our prestigious revision kits, RCM revision kits. Remember, if you go, for example, today to any good bookshop, you can buy this at, at you can get it for less than 1300. But you can imagine once you just pay us for these online classes, 3400, you get all those benefits. You get all those benefits. What's more, the best thing is that we are giving you unparalleled quality, unparalleled quality. So we happen to be having a fresh intake for students who will be doing the exams in November, where we are starting our syllabus from scratch, from scratch. So you only pay us 3,400 and we start the syllabus from scratch with you, where we are giving you an assurance of a pass. So if you want a pass through guidance, it is RCM. Thank you very much. God bless you. Continue sharing our posts.